Today on Ask This Old House. How are quartz countertops different from other materials? We'll show you what they are, how they're made, and how they're installed. As you can see, Kevin, the ceilings are a little low here. So when we lift this piece up from the bottom, we're gonna lean it on the edge of the cabinet. We're gonna lower the L shape towards us so we can slide it in safely. I'll show you how to display and hang the American flag. We're gonna split some firewood. Yeah, Tommy. And installing a masonry fire pit can really upgrade your backyard. I'll show you how to do it. This is awesome, Mark. Thank you. When picking out new countertops, most people opt for some kind of a stone. And traditionally, that has meant granite or marble. Those are quarried from the earth. They come out in big blocks, and then they are sliced into slabs. But lately, another option has surged in popularity. Quartz countertops. And those are made in facilities, like this one here in Minnesota. Quartz is extremely hard, and that's why people like it for countertop surfaces. It basically won't scratch, and it's non-porous, which means it really won't stain. So it's easy to clean, and you don't have to seal it like granite. Quartz is a mineral, so it is mined out of the ground, and then it is crushed and sorted into pieces as big as this, right down to a fine powder. Those pieces are mixed with a binder, and that basically makes a batter. It then comes into this machine right here, which distributes the batter evenly into rubber molds, which are then rolled into this machine, where it is vibrated, compacted, and a vacuum pulls out all of the air making the material non-porous. Then it is rolled into the big oven where it is cooked at about 200 degrees for 30 to 60 minutes. And when it comes out, it's hard as stone. And once they're polished smooth, they're ready to be sent to a fabricator, cut to size, and then they're ready to be installed in somebody's home. Hi, Kevin. Welcome to our house. We're so happy to have you here. Very nice. How long have you guys been here? About four years. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So it was a little bit of a fixer when we bought it, and we've been doing some projects here and there. Such as? Uh, so in the kitchen, we painted the cabinets white. Yeah. They used to be a dark wood before. Uh, we also painted the walls. They were yellow to match this lovely countertops. You're not, uh, you're not enamored with your countertops, no, are you? <laughs> no, we are not, no. So we were thinking of putting something in a little bit more durable that looks a little more modern, updated. Right. We were thinking quartz. Probably a good choice. Um, hard work and material, definitely updated from what you got. I mean, this is typical back in the day that you mm -hmm. see a lot of this laminate countertop with the embedded backsplash, but it has probably served its purpose. So we can, uh, we can definitely upgrade that. And we've got a friend who fabricates countertops. Oh, great. So he's gonna be able to help out. Although we could help him out if we were to take these out before we got here. So you up for doing some work? I am. All right, well, let's clean them off and get going. Okay. All right, so we've gotta get this sink out of the way. So I'm gonna give you that wrench. Once you get underneath there, we've turned the hot and cold water off. And now you just have to break the connection there from those risers. So there's a little, see that nut? Yep, there you go. Just like that? Yep, just a threaded connection. Just lefty-loosey. Okay. Nice. All right, now the drain pipe, if you, you use the rag, you can probably loosen that by hand. That nut, yep, yep, right there. All right, just finish that off. There it goes. All right. All right, we should be able to pretty easily. Oh, look at that. Pretty good. You're gonna miss this? I don't think so, no. <laughs> All right, we will get rid of this. Thank you. Okay, so when I was underneath there, there were a bunch of places to clip the uh, countertop to your mm -hmm. cabinets, but none of them had screws, <laughs> believe it or oh. not. Hence this. But I think that's gonna work in our favor. We might be able to just to pull it out. Grab over there. Okay. Look at that. <laughs> there you go. There it is. That came off pretty easily. Here we go. Down like this, good. Okay. Here, why don't you take this in, the lighter end over there. And we're gonna go right out the back door, so you lead. All right. Off you go. 
Jenny, say hello to Danny Puccio. He has helped us out Hi. a lot. Hi, Jenny. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Thank you for coming. One of the best in the biz. Thank you. She helped with the countertop removal, so we're in good shape here, Danny. Excellent. And uh, your guys are doing what for us? Well, what they're doing is they're taking these wooden Luan strips, and they're going to actually make a form of the counter. At that point, we'll measure it all out, write it down on, on this graph paper, so that we ensure that all our measurements are correct. Hot glue with the individual pieces? Yes. They're going to scribe the walls. This way, we can take that form and later on cut it. Well, now that we've completed the templating process, Jenny, I'm going to need you to come back to my shop and pick out an actual slab. Okay. What we'll do is we'll take that slab, we'll put it down on a wet saw, and we'll cut out the form that we've made here, including the sink cutout and the edge detail work. All right, that sounds good. Now you can watch This Old House and Ask This Old House anytime, anywhere. Download our new app to stream full episodes to your tablet, your TV, and your phone. Binge on classic episodes, catch up on recent renovations, and get step-by-step -step help projects all around the house. And best of all, it's free. The most trusted home improvement information is now available on your Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, iOS, and Android devices. Download the This Old House streaming app today. Danny, a lot of times you see these slabs being moved by four or five guys, and you're down to two because of this set of wheels. Yeah, as you can see, along with the wheels, we also have these clamps on the ends. These three things really take the burden off the guy's backs when they're transporting the material. It narrows it down from a three or four person job. Now two people could comfortably use these tools to get a stone into a house. And the wheels are clamped right to the stone so they can just lift it up over a threshold or up a stair or two and they're right back on the wheels. Exactly. There's the ceiling. As you can see, Kevin, the ceilings are a little low here. So when we lift this piece up from the bottom, we're going to lean it on the edge of the cabinet. We're going to lower the L shape towards us so we can slide it in safely. There we go. All right, Kevin, we're going to lift this up. Michael's going to come in behind us and put a nice bead of silicone along the tops of the cabinets and along this sink here. This way it seals everything up nice and it secures the countertops in place. Okay. At the shop, we inserted some threaded inserts and what Michael's doing right now is he's securing the sink with some threaded clips. We also use silicone to secure the backsplash into place. Well, Jenny, your new countertops are in. What do you think? I love them. They look so great. Boy, they really do. Yeah. I think you nailed the color too, right? Thank you. Yeah, it's a big improvement on the yellow ones. Yeah, well, that was easy. Yeah, true. <laughs> but this is a good color. You want to wait 24 hours before you put anything on them. We really want that silicone that we put in to really set up. Okay. A couple other things too. This outlet's not in a great spot, but that's an easy fix for an electrician to move that. Um, your faucet needs to be connected by the plumber. Uh, as do the connections underneath. And you know, we noticed when we were down there that the shutoffs for the hot and cold and the P-trap is below this cabinet in the basement. So when the plumber comes, have them look at that and fix it as well. Okay. Otherwise, we'll I think you're good to go. Yes. Thank you again. Thank you both. It looks amazing in here. I can't wait for the kids to come home and see this for yeah, the first time. Yeah, awesome. Danny, thank you to you and your guys for all the help. You're very welcome. Nathan, we are talking flag etiquette, and you are our guy, thanks to uh, both your naval service, mm -hmm. but also as an Eagle Scout within the Boy Scouts. I've had a lot of training over the years, a lot of training on flag etiquette, I so I know a little bit about it. Actually, my Eagle Scout project was based around the flag itself. I had a local cemetery, and I wanted to update the veterans' database from paper to electronic, oh, and in doing so, we found some graves that weren't marked properly, huh. so the American Legion supplied these new markers. Right. And you place it right at the grave, and then we have these cemetery flags that we uh, upgraded as well. So they could be appropriately um, honored on Veterans Day. Exactly. Okay, cool. So there are rules, um, and you guys in the military certainly have to follow those rules. Absolutely. 
there's a set of guidelines. Uh, the military likes it, Boy Scouts, American Legion follows them. Mm -hmm. It is a set of guidelines. Civilians aren't required to follow it, but it's a great set of guidelines to follow because there's a lot of good information in there. All right, so give us some of the rules that we should be thinking about. You know, a lot of people like to display flags on their houses. Good, good place to start is an all-weather flag, yeah. something synthetic that's going to stand up to the rain and the wind. Gotcha. Um, if you want to display it at night, keep it lit. Um, over time, if your flag becomes tattered and worn and you need to retire it, um, the best way to is burn it, incinerate it, start with the Union, the blue field. Wait, so this up here, this corner right here, this is called the Union? This is the Union right here. Uh -huh. So once you incinerate that, it's no longer a flag. Gotcha. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can bring it to the American Legion or the Boy Scouts and they'll cool. do it for you. Okay. The Union being blue and white currently has 50 stars because we have 50 states. 50 states. If they ever added another one, they would add a star. If they ever add another state, they would add a star the next Fourth of July following. But so not until the Fourth of July would we change the flag. Yeah, I don't that's know. If, I don't cool. know if that's going to happen though. <laughs> I did not know that. All so right. displaying the flag, some people like to hang it up horizontally, horizontally or vertically. This orientation horizontally. Uh, best way to do that is keep the union in the top left. Okay, so union up there. Now, if you're going to hang it this way. Again, Again, top left. Oh, interesting. Proper way to display it. So that's proper, and if you hung it this way off, say, your upper deck, that would be inappropriate. Inappropriate, yep. Gotcha. All right. So those are some of the rules, regs. Uh, and as you say, civilians don't have to necessarily follow those rules, but it is a great way to show respect for the flag to it try is. to adhere to them. It is. All right. In terms of just practically getting them up on the house, because a lot of us have got something like this, you yes. know, where it comes with the pole and the bracket. These kits are a great place to start. You got a bracket, the pole, the flag, everything you need to hang it up. Yep. Um, these kits are, you can only have it in two different angles. Actually like a bracket like this that you can okay. adjust with a wing nut. Yep. So you can get just the right pitch. So if you unscrew this, this goes either way. Yeah. All and right. uh, outside the front door, a lot of people have overhangs, so you might need to avoid that. You don't want the flag brushing up against it. If you need to get out into the body a little bit, you can get one of these surface mounted blocks that fits into some clapboard. Interesting. You can mount that right anywhere you need to. Okay. And then mount the bracket to that. Let's uh, let's mount it up here. Let's yep. see how we do right there. We'll hold that. So it's got a little center hole right away. Yep. Right. Okay, you want me to locate this guy? Yeah, let's place it up there. All right, so I'll try to center that. Right. I'm gonna pile it first. Yeah. Move it on you and screw you up. And it's good to remember when mounting this bracket that it's going to see a lot of high winds. So you want to go through that block into the sheathing and really drive those screws in. All right, Kevin, can you hear me the flag? I can. There she is. All right, we'll tuck that right in and tighten up this nut on the side. Nice. Nice and secure. Good angle. She's hanging properly and yep. proud. Good, good. Thank you, Nathan. You're welcome. Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider, a new streaming service from This Old House, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial free. Watch it all in the This Old House app and join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. Jen, splitting wood, what's going on? Splitting wood, because you know, a lot of homeowners have fire pits and fireplaces. It's and a big deal. It's a huge deal, and it's cheaper to do your own wood. Absolutely. So, so this machine is an electric wood splitter, and it's really easy to use. Yeah, so I see this is not a hydraulic uh, splitter. No, it's not a hydraulic splitter. It runs on centrifugal force. There's a wheel inside. Yeah, right in here. I know there's a big heavy wheel in here that spins really fast. Right, and when the momentum gets going, you pull the safety, you pull the lever, and this part goes out and slams the piece of wood to split it into this wedge. Right, definitely easier than splitting by hand. It definitely is. I prefer this method. Well, have you ever done it? The older way? I'm not way. sure I've done it properly the older way. Well, you let show me, me show you. All Absolutely. Right. 
All right, so when you're splitting wood, a lot of people, the first thing they think of is an ax. Right. All right, now an ax is really, you know, it's okay for splitting wood, but the primary design of an ax is to cut trees down, okay. cut heavy branches off without using a saw. From the All side. Right? So if you notice, it's kind of a narrow head and it's very sharp. Okay. The other way you can, you can split wood is with a splitting maul. Now look at this, this is heavy. That's a completely different shape to this. Yeah, and it's really broad so that when this gets into the wood, you want to split those fibers apart. Okay. And sometimes you'll actually split it with a wedge and a maul or a sledgehammer. Okay. You drive that into the tree like that and this works down and it pulls the grain apart. But this is heavy. Splitting it and turning this around all day long. How many pounds is that? This is probably eight pounds. Eight pounds right there. That See should that? be a good workout, yeah, though. Yeah, so you swing that around, and you're going to have a workout, that's for sure. But they developed a, a splitting axe right here. Now, you see the difference in this head? It actually has a wedge right here. Right. All right, and it's a little bit heavier than the standard axe right. also. And it's a little wider, huh? Right. Okay. So when you look at the, if you look at the two together, there's really a big difference in the, in the width. Right, like, right. So say the girth. And that makes a di big difference in splitting. It makes a big difference in splitting. Okay. So I could take and use this for the maw, uh, for the maw like this also, a splitting wedge like this, I drive it in and that would split the wood and this would give me some good power. But if I could try to split this with hand, the first thing I would do is I would look for the checks in the wood. And checks would be cracks. Okay. I would stand back. I would stand back too. I'm not going to hit anything. <laughs> now I'm not going to drive this into the middle. I want to start out on the edge. And I can either go to this edge and that edge, but you're always better off coming to the edge closest to you. Why is that? Well, because I, I don't want to have to reach fast. And if it comes through too fast, I don't want to hit the handle on there. It could damage it. Okay. Next thing I do is I look for any knots because going through a knot is not good. Mm -hmm. So I find it, I get it lined up like that. I stand back, I have my legs apart a little bit, a little bit of an angle. Okay. Now I reach, I grab it, I get it to swing. When it swings, I'm gonna just turn a little bit at the same time, get the momentum of the ax going and drive it into the wood. I wanna keep pushing it okay. all the way. So I get up, get a good distance, bring it up, swing it. Down, just like that. Just like the centrifugal force right. in the in the exactly. wheel. Exactly. Got it. Into the wood. Okay. Drive it away. Turn it. Drop it on. Get a distance. Swing it. Look at that. Up. That's the grain of the wood right there. That happens. Wow. I didn't know the tips of coming from the outside. Going you want straight to try one? I would love to. Right. So line it up first for distance. Good job. Ready? Let it fall. Grab it. Spoon. Almost. Almost. Whoa, you got that one all right. <laughs> nice job. Excellent. So what do you think is better? Oh wow, great space. Yeah, we love it back here. We've been here for about seven years and uh, it's a great place to hang out. We built this patio a few years back. We like to eat dinner out here and sometimes we like to have a fire by the fire pit. All right, Ah, so this is the fire pit. Yeah, we're looking for something to upgrade it. You know, this is sort of a temporary thing for us. It's getting old, it's getting rusty. We'd love to replace it with something more permanent. All right, well, you know, these fire pits can really run the gamut. Uh, they can be super inexpensive and just give you four or five fires a year all the way up to something that's super expensive. A few years ago on the show, Jen actually put a fire pit together using four pieces of granite. So it was beautiful, but they can get pretty pricey. Yeah, we're not looking to go that high with the budget. Okay, so I know if we go down to the home center where they have these precast blocks, they're actually cut in such a way that they're gonna make a circle, which again is a desirable fire pit. So I think we should probably start there. That sounds excellent. All right, let's go. All right, so what we've done is I've taken the metal ring that we're gonna use when we're done, and we've used it as a template. And I laid the first course of block dry. That's gonna do a couple things for us. Most importantly, it's gonna give us the location. You like where we are? Yeah, this is a great spot. It's set back from the patio and far away from the trees, so we don't have to worry about the fire coming up. All right, that's great. So the next thing is to dig. So grab your shovel, 
And what we're gonna do is dig, dig around the block and we're gonna stay off the block by three inches. So once we're done making this cut, we're gonna remove the first course of block, we're gonna remove the ring, and then we're gonna dig out our pit. So as we're digging, just make sure to save some grass because once we put our fire pit in, we're gonna need to patch our lawn into the block. So Mark, how deep do we need to go? The manufacturer wants us to go down two inches, but in New England, I like a little drainage, so we're gonna go down a little deeper, maybe eight inches. Right there. Right up. All right, now this is two inch trap rock, which is very good for our drainage. Why is it important that we have drainage underneath the pit? We get a rainstorm and water goes into the pit. We want it to be able to drain through the trap rock and into the soil and disperse itself. We're gonna to wanna to pack it with the hand tamper every two inches. How do you know when we're ready for the next uh, course? Uh, you got a minute to go. It's going to feel uh, very solid. It's not going to bounce the way it's bouncing right now. So keep hammering down. Flip it in. Great. So this is gonna be our final course. It's the paver base, and all it is is a mixture of three-quarter inch stone and stone dust. All you're gonna do is rake it out, and then we'll level it off. All right, so we're gonna put our ring back in, and just like before, we're gonna use this as a template because we're gonna do the most important thing on the job so far, and that's set our first block, which is very, very important. We wanna make sure it's level side to side. That's perfect, actually. We're gonna go front to back, and make sure that's level. I gotta tap down a bit. All right, I'm level there. Now we're gonna level the whole first course off of that one block. Don't forget the next two courses go off of this. We're not gonna use the level too much on those courses, so that's why it's critical to get every single block as perfectly level as possible. Perfect. So what we've done is we've laid our second course, but we've laid it dry. So we're gonna peel back this block, call it our first block, and you're gonna give me some construction adhesive right across here and right across here, and I'll put the block back in. Now I'm gonna wiggle this one into place, and we're gonna do this the entire way around the rim. For the third course, we're going to do the same as we did for the second course, we're going to lay them in dry and then we're going to use the adhesive. So now we're going to fill up the bottom of the pit with lava rock. You dump, I'll spread. Alright, so the last piece of this whole puzzle, Jim, is just to take the grass, patch it back into the lawn so like we were never there. What do you think, Jim? This is awesome, Mark. Thank you. We had fun today, right? We did. Yeah, I love it. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.